I hope I'm mentally prepared enough to face whatever Reggie's got in store today. Which speaking of, head to the top of the description. There should be a link to the original video. Give it a like and sub to Reggie. He makes incredible videos. Also, I'm not sure if this is an actual faction or a modded faction. Potentially modded. We'll see. Have you ever wanted to wield occult powers, decimate the French yeah. colonies, or even yes. command vast armies of reanimated monstrosities? Well, I've got good news mm -hmm. for you. We'll be doing all of that with today's new Dread race, King. the Dread Legion. Our goal? Track down... Ah, uh, okay, yeah. This is uh, definitely a mod, then. ...all eight books of Nagash and use their arcane magics to become the dominant superpower in the world. Can we complete this exceptionally violent scavenger hunt, or will we be crushed under the heel of a hollow-eyed lunatic? Let's find out. <laughs> <laughs> but first, a word from our sponsor. 14 years ago, my wife died in an airplane accident. Apparently, Aww. some lunatic replaced her plane's jet fuel with high-octane gaming supplements, which caused the plane to go supersonic and crash into the Empire State Ex Building. What? These supplements <laughs> contain the combined energy of 73 atomic detonations, and the only vessel on the planet... No, the only vessel in the galaxy that can safely contain them is you. The anatomy of a gay mer <laughs> is uniquely suited to metabolizing and disarming these highly oh reactive compounds. God. I'm begging you to buy and consume these products to keep oh our country safe. God. And don't forget to use code Reggie for 10% off, or else something bad might happen. At I... I was not mentally prepared. <laughs> It's been a while since I've seen anything from Reggie, and um, he's certainly a man who has a way with words, doesn't he? Actually, in fact, I think the last time I checked out Reggie was one of his more chill videos on his second channel. Head over. Our journey begins in what I believe to be Algeria. We have the Dreadlord himself, along with several reanimated <laughs> Roman soldiers, and someone doing their best impression of Ooh. Count Dante. Very nice. I start our first <laughs> battle see. against some Tomb Kings, and they quickly realize their position in the skeletal oh, hierarchy. That? Following this, I recruit some ogre mercenaries, capture a settlement, and begin sieging the Black Tower of Arkham, the unit. inhabitants of which decide to counter us with an an exciting strategy called starving to death. Fascinating. After three turns, we <laughs> auto-resolve them out of existence and begin building some infrastructure. This race has oh, yeah. a lot of unique and powerful units, yeah, those, so we're going whoa. to rush our military development as quickly as possible. You may look at units like these and think, whoa. Reggie, it's not 1939 anymore. You don't have to take over the world. And for once, you're right. All I want is a nice little chunk of North Africa, and then we're focusing um. entirely on expanding our book collection. Mm. At this point, our empire is fine. It's cute, everyone is happy, and most most importantly, no one is trying Happy. to kill us. However, Relatively. I am prepared to sacrifice all of that for a chance to obtain magical artifacts. You see, the Tomb Kings have a primitive version of an in-game cash shop, except instead of completing <laughs> microtransactions with your mom's credit card, you pay for things with yeah. human organs that you have harvested from your enemies. Personally, yeah. I think it works a lot better this like way. Kind of Regardless, guards, right? if we want to feed the Dread King's addiction to hype beast clothing, we're going to have to expand our empire further and disembowel a few people along the way. Now, I've learned the hard way that running around with a jackknife and carving out people's organs is a quick way to become unpopular. So we need to pick an evil target that absolutely hmm. no one would care about. Ladies and gentlemen, the French. I walked the <laughs> Dread King up. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I mean... I can't even disagree. <laughs> she does have a bonus when she's fighting against undead, though, so... Uh, this is gonna be interesting to see how he manages this to one of their settlements, had him flail his arms around menacingly, and then declared war. This might look bad, but uh, that's a lot of organs. So I decided to go for it. The nice thing about fighting the Bretts in the early game is that they often don't have mounted units, so you can yeah. just run around clubbing peasants until their leadership breaks. Speaking of leadership, Thankfully. the enemy general is currently being pulverized by an elephant, and I think their lines are starting to notice. After 13 minutes of bullying poor people, the battle was over, and Xandri, <laughs> along with all of its organs, was ours. Raponce was watching all of this unfold with a thousand yards <laughs> stare, but I assured her that I don't want to ethnically cleanse her empire. I need to. And so the war expands. She was out of position, and we took our hike without much trouble, and quickly raised a second oh army to defend the homeland. In response, Raponce launched a siege on our castle, despite having an army that was over 50% cavalry. Scientifically speaking, this is the quickest way to determine whether or not someone is retarded. With Raponce's <laughs> Never mind, Reggie's gonna do just fine if this is how Rapunzel is playing it. <laughs> 
Main army defeated, we swiftly subjugated her empire, defeating her auxiliary forces along the way. This was a phenomenal outcome for the war. However, Arkin the Black captured a settlement that I believe rightfully belongs to me. Do I have any yeah. logical argument I mean, to support this stance? I mean, everything belongs to us. Definitely not. Instead, I have an undying sense of ultranationalism and levels of territorial aggression that most closely resemble a pit bull at a daycare. I briefly uh -oh. considered trying to diplomatically acquire the settlement, oh but then I realized Arkin's main character characteristics are aggressive and power hungry and i quickly decided that it would be better for everyone show if he your power. was dead and i yeah. was using his organs to buy v bucks all of our opponents thus far possessed about as much tenacity as a Reddit user who has just been chemically castrated. So I was kind of expecting Arkin to simply roll over and die. But he clearly had other ideas, because he oh. used his Ushabdi to absolutely massacre my second army. Oh. I harnessed the souls of my dead Finally, soldiers to summon in some opponent. skeletal minotaurs. They also died instantly. This was slightly concerning. However, it's only our second army. The real battle is about to begin at Lashik between Arkin and the Dread King. The combat was a bit of a mixed bag. Some things went really good, other things, not so much. We formed lines of skeletons supported by elite hoplites and mummies. However, the enemies were seemingly endless, and despite abusing winds of death as much as humanly possible, we were quickly surrounded and slaughtered to the last man. Damn. Being cucked so severely by Arkin the Black made me begin edging vigorously, except the payoff I'm working towards is not sexual gratification, but rather a date with a braided rope. However, I realized this video would be far too short if I gave up now, so I clawed myself back from the void and started rebuilding my armies. Ar oh god. Reggie, I need to ask, are you genuinely like, okay, dude? <laughs> I mean, I know it's a joke. <laughs> but, you know, sometimes. But yeah, a lot of these DLC units look pretty interesting. Just adding a, a bunch of different kinds of undead and stuff. The elephant and undead look pretty interesting as well as... I think those are like Hydra undead. <laughs> Usually the followers of Nagash don't really give me any problems. They, they kind of just die on their own. But earlier today I was watching another video by Brilliant Stupidity. And uh, there a lot of factions were behaving very differently. I don't know, maybe it's because of um the campaign difficulty being different i play it on normal and then i put battle difficulty on very hard with no stat pumps but maybe with a different difficulty on the campaign the other factions can actually you know know how to do things much better Arkin obviously tried to stop me, but I couldn't help but notice that his soldiers possess an innate weakness to being crushed by chariots. And we started turning the tides. We even captured Vulture Mountain nice. thanks largely to these little fellas. They're a shielded regiment of renown with decent combat stats, but most importantly, you can activate this ability to stop them from dying for 20 seconds, which is a hilarious oh. fuck you to whoever they're fighting at that time. We traded yeah, wins right. back and forth for a little while, but once the Dread King was back, the war started going in our favor. I'd like to think we started winning because of my strategic genius, but in reality, it probably had something to do with this. You see, we got lucky with a random event, and now we have a bone hydra. It's massive, has ah. regeneration, and is entirely capable of incinerating whole squads Ooh. of soldiers with its breath alone. Is this a little strong for early game? Maybe a bit unbalanced? A little bit. Possibly yeah. even completely yeah. unfair? Yes, uh -huh. and I don't care. We use this monstrosity <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, I mean, to be fair, you're fighting a bunch of AI, so like, who cares, right? Use what you've got. But that thing does look really cool. And the abilities that it has, uh, would honestly just make it an include in any army to capture the Sorcerer's Island, which effectively put an end to Arkin the Black's mission to sexually humiliate me. As a reward, we were given two <laughs> things, a declaration of war oh from no. several obese men oh, and a scrag. new legendary lord. Persimius is uh, one of Ooh. these guys, and they appear to have an unhealthy fixation on rebuilding the Holy Roman Empire because they provide some massive buffs I to see. legionnaires, hoplites, and the Royal Guard. That's fine though, with our chunk of land secured, we're going to need several capable armies to travel 
travel the world collecting our books. Speaking of books, it's about time we claim our first. The fourth book of Nagash gives us 250 canopic jars, increased lord rank, and better recovery time. Not bad. However, it's being guarded by a wood elf named Nicolander, who has been standing perfectly still in the middle of the desert for the past 38 turns. I'm thinking he must <laughs> be pretty he thirsty, doing? so I decide to go over there and beat him and to give death. Him some water. But before oh, I can unleash yeah. my skeletal that minotaur too. on him, I realize something truly horrifying. It's bad enough that he's a wood elf, but his arm army appears to be some what? incestuous mutant offspring, a twisted intermingling of wood elves what? and lizard men. I shudder to think of what exactly they've been oh, doing in the oh desert God, this whole time oh. and how they've been hiding oh, no. each other, but something about oh, Nicolander's- Oh God, no! <sighs> Why did we have to go there? Why? But uh, yeah, question to you guys, is that normal? <laughs> I mean, wouldn't the Wood Elf guy have a bunch of Wood Elf units, or is that part of the mod, and it just kind of altered things, or maybe something broke in the coding? I don't know. Lifeless visage tells me everything I didn't want to know. <laughs> I could no longer bear this imagery, so I lashed out violently oh. and began the battle. Nicolander's army has some high-quality infantry, a few treemen, and several dinosaurs. Once you get past that, everything else could be classified as annoying rather than dangerous. I took yeah. my two armies, formed a front line three layers thick, and then began poking at our interspecies enemies using some Screaming Skull catapults. Oh. Something about having their limbs blown off in an explosion really bothered the lizards and they decided to charge at us. The lines crashed it's against each other natural. and I did my best to wrap my infantry around theirs. Unfortunately, there's a reason my infantry is free, because it sucks ass. And the tree men yeah. were flailing their way through the battlefield, killing hundreds every few minutes. Additionally, some ranged ambushers appeared on the oh. left flank and began harassing Yikes. my crypt ghouls. After chasing them off, we used our ballistae to bring down the tree men, and the enemy forces started to crumble. Nicolander himself was still alive, but that's nothing a few Cairn Wraiths can't fix. We finished the battle with 1500 casualties, but I'm thinking it's worth it because now we can finally get our first book. And then the game crashed. Oh. Reload the game, it burn happens. the forests, and assault I mean, people for their modern. questionable paraphilias. Done. The fourth book of Nagash is now ours. To celebrate, let's kill an old man. After taking out the cult of Sigmar, our empire looks like this. A vast sea protects the west, and our bony brothers protect the east. Huh? Technically, there is a faction of satanic demons to the north, but much like my tens of thousands of dollars in student loans, I am choosing to oh, ignore no. that. Now, our book hunting <laughs> can begin in earnest. I fleshed out the Dread King's army with a new mount, a few units of cavalry, and a bone giant before sending him across the ocean to Lustria. It is here in these human what? jungles that we will find our next book being held by more. Oh, I see. So the books on Nagash are just literally scattered all across the world. But man, I would not want to go uh, into the Lustria beatdown. We've been there with Gorok. It's an absolute mess. Wrathbringer of Haskanesh, or for short, Morty. Morty is blending his dark elf army with several chaos abominations, which makes him a disgusting what? freak, but we already knew that because he's an elf. Based on that alone, yeah, he needs to die. So I landed in Lustria, tracked him down, and started the battle. I wish I could say this was competitive, but he completely failed to protect his backline from my cavalry, oh, and once they were no. dead, my lancers just took turns charging his infantry from behind. His chaos giants were somewhat troublesome, but not after after I introduced them to my bone giant. After seven minutes of bending the Geneva Conventions, the battle was over and we gained yet another book of Nagash. This one increases cool. our recruitment capacity for several very oh, powerful units. Around very this time, good. I wanted yeah. to get some experience for Persemius, but we're only at war with one faction, and as it turns out, they're too morbidly obese to be able to sail across the sea to us. So instead, <laughs> I decided to go to them. Yeah, Persemius go to them. commands an army of almost exclusively spearmen, which are very strong against against large units. And you can call the ogres many things, uh, but small of them is definitely large, not yeah. one of them. So we effortlessly established a beachhead at Sar- That is actually a severe weakness for the ogres. So how would you circumvent that when you're playing? Or uh, I suppose when you're playing it, the AI doesn't exactly like build an army in order to specifically counter you. They'll probably have a few anti-large units. It just as a normal army composition thing, but... But yeah, if you need to take down the ogres, just bring a bunch of anti-large units and it's gonna be easy peasy. 
Toza and carved our way up the coast in pursuit of the eighth book of Nagash. This one increases the effect of our provincial commandments by 50%, which becomes absolutely fucking insane as your empire grows larger. Anyway, to get it, all we have to do is capture Karaza Karak. And yes, I know that ah. somewhere in the world, a real life dwarf dies yeah. every time I pronounce that name wrong. And that makes me very <laughs> happy. Anyway, after massacring the entire ogre race, I was feeling pretty cocky and Karaze Karak was wide open. So without any forethought whatsoever, I just attacked it. The good news oh. was we won the battle very easily, okay. but it doesn't matter what we did, it matters who we did it to. Because I failed yeah. to realize this was owned by Scarsnake of the Crooked oh. Moon. Why does that matter? Because he's currently the strongest faction in the Whoa. game and what is effectively six armies just showed up next to Oh God. This is kind of funny because, yeah, as I mentioned earlier, I just watched the video of the Squigs Only Challenge that Brilliant Stupidity did. <laughs> I didn't realize Scarstick could be that strong. Semius and started stretching and applying lubricant to themselves. We tried to escape, but after a few turns, they managed to corner Persemius and fuck him to death. The battle oh was kind of God. cool because we had all of these hoplites in a tight formation against endless legions of Zack Snyder Persians. But uh, <laughs> yeah, fucked to death. The fucking yeah, of Persemius yeah. is a Greek tragedy that has unfortunately been lost to time. But it's alright because in the meantime, the Dread okay. King has been making a lot of progress. We sailed oh, him up the coast from Lustria into this disgusting area which contains lizard men, dark elves, and some kind of geographically displaced Asians. This feels like a collection <laughs> of races that weren't the uh, it's the the jade dragon guy, right? I mean they had to put him somewhere else. If all of them just started in Kase, it would be kind of man. <laughs> He's actually surprisingly easy to deal with as a lizard man. It doesn't hate your guts, unlike a certain hunter in the north there considered cool enough to be in an interesting part of the map, so they've just been abandoned here like lost children. And the only reason I'm even here is to beat one of them up and steal their literature. Specifically, Damn. Lord Mazda Mundi of the Hexawaddle tribe. He has the first book of Nagash, and in order for us to get it, we have to capture the heart of his empire, the capital city itself, Hexawaddle. This was, again, fairly easy, because the AI doesn't generally expect a homicidal African maniac to spend 20 turns sailing across the sea just to dive bomb their capital city with exactly zero provocation. But here <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, who would? It's not really the most strategically sound decision out there, but I mean, uh, I guess it works. Although, to be honest, that sounds like the most AI thing to do. <laughs> like... Like some random faction just demands money from you. You say no. You're on the other side of the map, dude. What do you even mean? They declare war on you, and then like a few turns later, there's <laughs> just armies upon armies on your capital, just out of nowhere across the sea. Like, what did I even do to you? I don't know if they've fixed any of the problems with like the the player bias that some of the AI have, but um, I, I guess you have to experience that at least once in order to have uh, officially played Warhammer 3. We are. We now have four out of eight books. Mazda Mundi was pretty upset about this. I can say that pretty confidently imagine. because on more than one occasion he tried to kill me with poisonous blow darts. However, he came up short each time, and the combination of him losing his capital city and also throwing countless armies at me actually destabilized his entire empire, and within 20 Yikes. turns the Chinese had exterminated him completely. Now I do feel slightly bad for Mazda Mundi. He was a proud warrior who, judging by his physique, deserved to die of type 2 diabetes <laughs> rather than an ethnic cleansing. But in addition to claiming his book of Nagash, we were also able to extract Aww. special resources from Hexawaddle. These oh, yeah, golden gold. skulls allow us to buy some very rare items from the mortuary cult. For oh. example, we were able to unlock a- I see. So here it specifically requires the materials as well as the canoptic jars and gold. So yeah, then this does promote like expansionist kind of gameplay to get all these uh, unique resources from particular settlements. Or maybe you could also obtain these by trading. I think that was also a mechanic for the 
quote unquote Tomb Kings, because this is a modded faction, so maybe this is just unique to them. New hero, the Hell Wraith, and we also picked up the amulet of Fasta, which has an ability that makes our enemies forget save. how shields work, but most importantly, Dang. it gives it 16% ward save. Very nice. At this Fasta. point, things are going quite well. My heroes are unlocking new spells, my income is going crazy, and Scarsnick seems to have chilled out about the whole wah thing. So I decided to push even further with my armies. The Dread King is currently making his way into elven territory for the third book of Nagash. This is the refined man's literature. Because rather than doing boring number shit, it summons a sandstorm that kills your enemies whenever you sack or occupy a new city. To obtain That's this, we just need to capture the White Tower of Hoeth. This is easily accomplished by utilizing our tried and true tactic of destroying innocent people with overwhelming violence and indifference. After storming the fields and chasing those pesky elves through the forest with my bone giants, we cleaned up an easy victory and the book was ours. Now I know what you're thinking. Reggie, isn't it a bad idea to travel the globe and make enemies with almost everyone you encounter? The answer is yes, kind of. But really, what are they going to do? Sail all the way across the ocean just to seek retribution against a man who is already fucking dead? Actually, one of them- Yeah, I was about to say. <laughs> the AI will do that to you. <laughs> What are you even talking about, Reggie? It did. It wasn't the technologically advanced elves, nor the warmongering orcs. It was young Morty. You see, about 20 what? turns ago, we beat him within an inch of his life to claim a book of Nagash. And after the battle, he was still alive. Yeah. But I figured he'd just wander into the jungle and get bit by a rattlesnake, so I never bothered to finish him off. However, it turns out he spent those 20 turns rebuilding his army and sailing really? across the ocean so that he could land on my southern shores and launch a surprise attack in the Great Desert of Araby. This didn't stop me from absolutely massacring him, but it did earn oh, just a little yeah. bit of my respect while I perforated him with 5,000 arrows. Now, it's time to secure the most difficult- I mean, okay, it was kind of funny, but to be fair, he didn't really have that many good units, did he? <laughs> book yet. The sixth book of Nagash buffs our mages, and it's being held by the Wizards College in Altdorf. This one is difficult to acquire, gonna, because yeah. usually by this point in the game, the Empire is some kind of steroid-infused, hyper-masculine yep. sex They're machine, really and they strong. typically aren't too keen on losing their capital city to some dickhead with a couple of spearmen. Unfortunately, Persemius is still dead, but over the past ten turns, I've been able to sneak a new general into Empire territory. However, Wait, for once, they? a full army of undead units trespass passing and marching straight toward the capital city actually triggered some alarm bells for our enemy and they had some defenders waiting for us when we arrived. Technically, okay. my Altdorf army had almost no experience whatsoever, but I was feeling pretty invincible and if I waited any longer, Carl might reinforce the position, so I decided to go for it. The auto battler is predicting okay, a decisive see. defeat, probably because of all of the enemy greatswords, which are known to cut through skeletons like a chainsaw through high schoolers in a horror movie. Mm -hmm. But we no. have committed and this reminds Remarkably gory I mean, comparison true. won't stop me. The battle unfolded on a fairly simple and wide open map, which was convenient. However, a few less convenient things became evident. One, at the start of any Warhammer battle, there is an unspoken penis measuring contest that takes place based on who has the larger front line. And in this case, we are the chodes. Not good. The mm. second troubling thing was that our enemies had a lot of art. You know. <laughs> I'm learning a lot of new things from this video that the tutorial doesn't really teach you about. Odd that. Archers didn't bother the hoplites so much, but my mummies spent the entire time getting smoked in the face with projectiles. Our lines smashed against each other and we locked them into a stalemate. I didn't have enough units to wrap around them, but I was able to use my chariots to punish his archers for being such undeniable bastards. This was fun and all, <laughs> but it is no substitute for having all of your limbs attached mm. to your body. And over time, we started to crumble and eventually we lost entirely. Yeah. This complicates our situation substantially because in every other case, we were able to surprise attack our enemies, steal their cities, and run off before they could do anything. But now, Carl will be expecting us. So I'm going to have to form a raiding party of at least three full armies to forge a warpath straight to Altdorf. Fortunately, we're in a good position to accomplish- I mean, I don't even know if three is gonna be enough. 
Because Carl has uh, quite a few armies at that point in the game, doesn't he? I guess we'll just have to wait and see. This. Because I've completed enough research to unlock our next legendary lord, Hierophant Hophthamos is a powerful spellcaster with an army of mummies, screaming skull catapults, and skeletal minotaurs. Joining him, Persimius with his legions of hoplites and royal guard, and finally Python Sisyphus with shock cavalry and peltests. Now it took me quite some time to transport these armies into Empire territory. It is and while very, that was very far. The Dread King was That's already sure. moving towards his next target. The second book of Nagash, held by the Pilgrims of Myrmidia. This book increases our trade income by 20%, which might seem unnecessary for someone that has 30,000 gold and doesn't pay their taxes, but I am the living embodiment of corporate greed, so this is as necessary to me as oxygen is to a living human being. We track down the Pilgrims off the coast of Ulthuan. They're a Bretonian Empire mix, which theoretically gives them access to very powerful Whoa. infantry and cavalry. But I recently unlocked a new regiment of renown, the Black Grail Knights. And let me tell you, these guys Whoa. do not mess around. I know this because yeah, their charge bonus like is it. insane, the... and when I select them, the game tells me they match up favorably against every unit on the battlefield. Anyway, the fight was underway, <laughs> and the pilgrims gambled their That's best great. units on trying to kill the Dread King. Not a terrible idea, but they failed to account for his ridiculous amounts of regeneration. Meanwhile, my five units of cavalry were sending his hand gunners into low earth orbit, <laughs> and my <laughs> spectral hoplites were griefing the enemy front line with their ephemeral trait. After a little bit of this, this, and that, the battle was over and the book was ours. There's just two more to go. Nice. Altdorf and one from the Beastmen. Following our abuse of the Pilgrims of Myrmidia, we beelined it straight for the seventh book, which gives us access to a steady supply of canopic jars and increased research rate. It's held by Abishek Bloodgatherer. Nice to meet you, Abishek. I am Dread King Book Gatherer, and I'm going to rip your skull open like a ripe bell <laughs> Pepper. The battle begins and our enemies what deploy great, their disgusting mixture of orcs and beast men. The distinction of these two creatures is, as far as I'm concerned, strictly theoretical. The conflict- Okay, yeah. I mean, we've seen so many mixed armies at this point. I think this is just a, a thing with the mod or it's just a game mechanic quickly turned unconventional, not just because there are several spiders the size of townhouses, nor the presence of an angry man hurling boulders at me, but rather the style One of those combat. Again, the beastmen deployed their armies in a disjointed manner, so rather than an organized front line, they split our phalanx apart and engaged us in several pockets of combat across the map. That's alright though. The pikemen chased down the spiders, the bone giants cleared out some cavalry, and our magic killed just about everything else. Before long, we were chasing the orcs into the river. This might not sound so bad, but remember that orcs are directly evolved from the British, which means that they cannot swim. That's why they had all the boats <laughs> after all. Anyway, everyone who didn't run was decomposing in the forest. <laughs> Finally, the seventh book is ours, and we've also unlocked a regiment of renowned skeletal elephant. Not bad at all. By this point, our dream team of generals has assembled outside the Empire borders. Okay, We're going let's to need see how a fallback this position in case we have any setbacks in this campaign. So I started by abusing Carl's little gimp at the sea <laughs> of Fyldorf. This was an easy battle, and the presence Dude. of our dread legions struck Poor so Supreme. much fear in the hearts of men that Gelt immediately proposed a peace treaty after I was done spanking him. This simplifies our situation considerably. Things are going well, and thankfully so, because if anything goes wrong here, it's going to be very difficult to provide reinforcements. You see, the endgame crisis hit, and it has buffed all of the oh. orc factions into late-game killing oh, machines God. with zero morality. And Skarsnik? Yeah, he's still pretty yeah, upset with us, to, and right. he's actually one, encircling yeah. North Africa and blocking oh, our access no. to the ocean. So we can't provide any more reinforcements to Empire territory. That's alright though, because my generals bounced around capturing more and more settlements until I found the bulk of Carl's military waiting for us in Reichland. I count one, two, three, four, five armies ready to kill us, with a sixth army Holy. in our flank in case we retreat. I position us as best I can, so instead of getting pounded by five armies, they attack us with only four. Auto Resolve thinks we're done for, but I have to fight it out. I spawned in and immediately realized this battle was going to give me brain damage because our reinforcements are arriving in the Wait. same position and at the exact same what? time as Carl's reinforcements. Wait, how's that going to work? <laughs> so, so each unit comes in one by one and then they immediately start fighting each other <laughs> one by one? What? Wait, but if there are units that are too near where the reinforcements come in, then the reinforcements, they, they just can't get on the battlefield, and, and so it just cancels, so like... Huh? 
so it's going to be nothing short of absolute mayhem. I started the fight and rushed my main army towards this point. Whatever happens is going to suck, but at least we can be the first responders and give our guys an advantage. Our enemies yeah. took the opposite approach, choosing instead to move toward their other reinforcements and group up with them before coming to get us. Anyway, each army started making its way onto the battlefield, and I had to pause the game briefly just to truly appreciate the abomination being birthed in front of me. The what? troops were intermingled so extensively what that any use hell? of magic would result in at least 50% friendly fire, so I settled on charging our enemies from behind with hydras and mummies. The rest of my forces formed a line and braced for the main enemy army, which was quickly barreling down on us. The enemy charged us in no particular order, and I am not yeah. exaggerating when I say this was without a doubt the most disorganized fight I have ever been a part of. Leading Carl's charge was, for some reason, his hand gunners, with infantry oh, fanning out in every direction while somehow <laughs> managing to leave their flanks exposed. During this, rocket oh batteries God. We're lighting up the battlefield oh, with seemingly no regard for friendly fire. Yeah. And finally, I want you to remember that this was all taking place against the backdrop of Carl Franz screaming for his life while <laughs> drowning in a sea of 10,000 bones. The fighting went on for 10 minutes, and just when it would look like what one side was getting the upper this? hand, we'd both get another handful of reinforcements to prolong our mutual suffering. <laughs> our enemies may have deployed their army as if they were speedrunning. I'm so glad I've never had to experience anything like this. Like, what in the world? How did this come about? <laughs> I mean, we literally saw how this came about, but I can't imagine this ever happening in one of my campaigns. Holy a defeat screen with bonus points for heavy casualties, but I will say one nice thing about them. They did a very good job at assassinating my generals. In fact, after 12 minutes, everyone except Persimius is dead, and even Persimius is hanging on by like 300 yeah. health. This was remarkably stressful, because without leadership, my entire army would probably They're just, just crumble. crumble. My enemy seemed to understand this, because he was using his steam tanks to try to snipe me from across the map. Usually, in such a stressful situation, your general may just opt to self-destruct, but I was able to use his crown of command as some kind of industrial oh, strength antidepressant yeah. to prevent him from killing himself just long enough for my cavalry to make it to the enemy back line and shut down their tanks. Nice. The rest of the battle really just boiled down to me spending 13 minutes slaughtering about 6,000 people. And it's hard to really depict that, but here's a view of what the battlefield looked like after I was done. Yeah, it was pretty messy. Poor anyway, with everyone dead, we finished off some steam tanks and claimed ourselves a victory. Both sides we were actually absolutely devastated, won. but with the powers of necromancy, we were able to quickly replenish our ranks in preparation for our march on Altdorf. Carl tried to stop us diplomatically, but there was nothing he can offer me that would make me stop other than his capital city itself. Which is kind of frightening, because that's like being in a fight with someone and you ask them what they want from you, and they reply, your brainstem. Anyway, that's his problem, and we walked him down at Altdorf on the next turn. Absolutely By this terrifying. point, our vampiric corruption had swept across the province, along with sandstorms, which started eating away at his armies and forcing them to flee. With no defense remaining, the siege of Altdorf went Easy, off without a hitch, victory. and with this final yeah. book, our purpose in life is complete. We now have all eight books of Nagash, and yes, now it what? is a shame that I'm illiterate, but at least I had a lot of fun collecting them. If I play any more, the orcs will probably just come down here and kill me, so instead, yeah. I'm going to utilize yeah, the likely. powers of quitting while I'm ahead to declare myself <laughs> the ultimate victor. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. I can't blame you, man. Scarstick is coming for you. That fight at the end was insane. I can never imagine that ever happening to me, but... I mean, it wasn't even part of the mod. It was just Carl being Carl, I guess, and stacking up all of his armies for the defense. Which makes sense. But the fact that we even pulled through that was even more impressive, so... Yeah, props to Reggie. Once again, if you haven't, go and subscribe to Reggie. Makes awesome content. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll catch you in the next one.